as far as my handicap, it isn't a deterrent to me. It's something that I can work with and, and bypass. Actually, the person that had the most to do with us getting involved with the LDS Social Services was our bishop in our ward. Well, I don't think that our financial problems will last too much longer, but I want to keep on helping because they've done so much for us. The activities were just innumerable. I think I used everything I ever learned in school and any kind of training I ever had when, when I, as a welfare services missionary. And it was really uh, quite a disaster. And it makes you really feel good that you're able to help. There's no satisfaction that comes to us like coming down here to the welfare farm early in the morning to work together. These people all have one thing in common. They are involved in a unique welfare system. This is not a government welfare program. It is based on principles of love, service, work, giving, individual responsibility and self-reliance. This is a film about welfare, another perspective. Hello, welcome to the Bishop's Storehouse, one of more than a hundred such complexes throughout the world. Now this storehouse is part of the Mormon storehouse resource system. That's a coordinated system of farms, dairies, processing plants, and thrift stores. Combined with the employment offices and social service agencies, they're all part of the welfare services of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. This vast storehouse resource system has been established by the church through the generous contributions of its members for the purpose of meeting needs which cannot be met by the individual or the family. But in the next few minutes, I'd like to show you how it looks from an outsider's point of view. You see, I'm not a Mormon, but I am impressed with the way Mormons help people to help themselves. The Mormons learned early about helping each other in a personal way when their pioneer forefathers carved a niche out of a desolate wilderness and others followed on foot across the plains. The first companies of pioneers that went west planted crops. Those who came later harvested them. When they arrived in the Salt Lake Valley, they worked together to build common fences and common ditches for the common need. But during those hard and hungry years, no one starved as long as his neighbor had food. Today, as then, Mormons are told that their responsibility is to care for themselves, their family, the poor, the needy, and the distressed in the Lord's way. In 1936, with economic desolation everywhere, the Mormons formalized their present church welfare services organization, based upon the belief that there is no curse equal to the curse of idleness, and that it is never any benefit to give to any man or woman money clothing, or anything else if they are able-bodied and can earn what they need. From its founding, it has had two principal objectives. First, help those in need to help themselves. And second, make the necessities of life available to those in need. The necessities of life are provided by volunteer labor. Both the employed and the unemployed freely work on nearly a thousand different welfare projects all over the world, like this tomato farm. These projects can produce just about anything you may need. Nearly 427,000 days of work were donated, and over 130,000 needy people were assisted. Thus, the unemployed are able to work for what they receive from the church, and the employed have a way to help the less fortunate. Direct financial contributions come from members of the church, 
all members are expected to abstain from or fast for two consecutive meals each month and give a generous cash contribution to the church to help the needy. In a matter of minutes, disaster can place normally self-sufficient people among the destitute. Sometimes whole communities can be left helpless. Within hours after the Teton Dam burst, causing tremendous floods in eastern Idaho, thousands of pounds of food and clothing arrived from church storehouses. Hundreds of tons of food and supplies went to Guatemalan earthquake victims in 1977. Thousands of dollars worth of aid was distributed in Australia after a recent disastrous flood. The other objective of the program, helping the needy to help themselves, involves providing jobs for those who may be out of work. The Mormons operate the Deseret Industries thrift stores, again for the benefit of the giver as well as the receiver. Now, in here, senior citizens and handicapped persons work to repair and reclaim furniture, toys, clothing, anything people in the community might donate. In the process, these people are provided meaningful employment, while other persons are able to buy vital necessities at inexpensive prices. I'm working at Deseret Industries. That way, I'm self-supporting and don't have to depend on the children. I like to be independent. I'm going to work till I'm 90. And then I'll retire and take life easy after that. I would like to do things for my own self instead of having to depend on other people all the time. I think that the Lord didn't expect us to just stay at home and receive welfare checks from the government for nothing. I think that he wanted us to be able to have a chance to work like other people. I think that um, the thing that's impressed me more than anything is the pride that people can have, that they can work for what they receive. You may wonder just how they determine who the needy people are. Well, that's the responsibility of the bishop, the man in charge of the ward. That's a congregation of about 200 families. The bishop is chosen from the congregation and is ordained to this office. He serves without pay. On occasions such as this welfare services committee meeting, the bishop receives reports from priesthood quorum and relief society leaders about families in need. In this meeting and at other times, church leaders match these families' needs with church resources. The assistance provided is made available by the bishop from the storehouse resource system and may include food, shelter, clothing, employment, medical assistance, adoption and foster care services, and help for the emotionally afflicted. Such needs often come to light when home teachers, lay members who are assigned to visit several homes monthly, meet with their families. The same week I had been laid off, the home teachers came by. I told them what had happened. I wasn't too concerned, thought I could find another job as a cataloger, but no luck. After a few months, it finally hit me that I'd have to train for a new occupation. And that was a rough adjustment. I decided to go to trade school in the evening and study accounting and work at whatever I could find during the day. What are we gonna do? By now, the severance pay was gone and I was hurting. Well, brother, I'm really having a hard time finding a job. I told my home teachers about it the next time they came over. They must have told the bishop because he called the next morning and said they could use a meat cutter at the bishop's storehouse. Well, that sounded good to me. The president of the Relief Society, that's the woman's organization, visited with my wife. She found out what we needed and filled out a bishop's order for groceries. That was a real blessing. I'm very thankful to be back on my feet now and to have a job waiting for me when I finish my accounting course. In addition to this kind of temporary help, welfare services can assist members in need of permanent employment. In dozens of offices like this one, members are referred to job openings in all kinds of occupations. In a recent year, employment was provided for nearly 25,000 individuals. Thousands of other persons are helped right in their own congregations through the efforts of local leaders and members. 
These people not only help match an applicant to a job opening, but they also provide career guidance and employment counseling. But what about members with social or emotional problems? Problems that simply cannot be solved by a new job or a box of groceries. Problems that even the local church leaders can't solve. Now, for people with such needs, the bishops can get special help from the LDS Social Services. This system of agencies helps local church leaders with members who have serious marital problems or other emotional conflicts. LDS Social Services is also licensed to assist members with such things as foster child placements. So we told him we'd try it and see how it would work, and so we took foster children from then on, and we've had 17 foster children in our home. Families accepting these children do so at their own expense. This is also true of those families accepting Indian children. During each school year, Indian students between the ages of 8 and 18 are given the opportunity to live in LDS homes. They attend school and associate in all their activities with both children and adults in the communities where they're placed. This is made possible through the Indian Student Placement Service. Okay, ready, right foot, and shut. I always wanted to write. I've always been interested in films, and I always wanted to be a dancer. Um, in the placement program, there were so many encouraging people. I would say that it helps you to make the best of both worlds. I'm learning. And I don't think I would have had the same opportunity if I stayed on the reservation. Well, I was on the Indian placement program for seven years. I'm really thankful to have the experience that the church has offered me through the placement program. I think the most important thing is that I, you know, being on the placement program, I went on a mission for the church, and that's very special to me. And, you know, it just uplifted my spirituality, and I feel closer to our Heavenly Father. The social services also provide a resource to unwed parents. Abortion is never an acceptable solution to this problem. Social services counselors are able to assist unwed parents in identifying the options they have available to them. We've just done what they've asked, and here we are, finally. We LDS Social Services also has a program for couples seeking to adopt and children. They told us the kind of the process and what was involved. Here's your new baby. Oh, my word. When members of the church don't have the necessary skills or human resources required to solve problems like poverty or health needs, the church can send specialists to assist them. Welfare services missionaries are assigned from here, LDS church headquarters, to join the thousands of proselyting missionaries around the world. Welfare services missionaries have special training or background in health, agriculture, vocational rehabilitation, or other related service fields. Their assignment is to serve as a resource to local church leaders in different parts of the world. The rule is, don't do it for them. Help them to do it for themselves. The people that the Welfare Services Missionaries deal with are very humble, and they haven't had the, the opportunities that a lot of people have had in their lives. They're, they've just been um, handicapped in a way by the, their surroundings. And just by giving them a little bit more information and just sharing what we have learned or what welfare missionaries have learned with people that haven't had that opportunity, it's just a thrill. What you've seen thus far deals with temporary assistance, getting immediate aid to someone with an immediate need. Assistance provided through a storehouse of resources available to those in need through a local bishop. This is the Utah State Prison. In addition to this kind of temporary help, the Mormons have developed special programs to assist in rehabilitating people with long-term problems, such as 
working with prisoners to help them develop self-respect and a new outlook on life. Such a program is proving effective in various prisons. Couples or families with older children are assigned through local priesthood quorums to meet monthly with an inmate whom they often continue to work with even after his release. A high percentage of these parolees completely turn their backs on crime. Other efforts include programs to combat alcoholism, to assist the deaf and the blind, and to help make the elderly feel needed and important. At the opposite end of this temporary assistance and rehabilitation program is prevention. For many years, the leaders of the church have encouraged personal and family preparedness. They've taught individual enterprise and thrift in church classes and in the homes so that the people can be self-sustaining and self-reliant. The whole idea is to anticipate possible problems and prepare for them by becoming well-read and informed about the world. In a word, educated by constantly training and upgrading job skills, by carefully managing the family finances and avoiding debt, and wherever possible, producing and storing a year's supply of food and other essentials, by becoming and staying healthy and physically fit, and by working to build up a reservoir of emotional stability to handle life's crisis. In summary, I would say that the Mormon welfare program is deeply rooted in the faith of the Mormon people, in their work ethic, and in their strong sense of self-sufficiency. I would also say that the Mormon welfare program works because the Mormon people do. In an age where it is fashionable to say, what's in it for me? I know of no other plan like this in the world. Mormon leaders have said, our primary purpose was to set up, insofar as it might be possible, a system under which the curse of idleness would be done away with the evils of a dole abolished, and independence, industry, thrift, and self-respect be once more established among our people. The aim of the church is to help the people help themselves. Work is to be re-enthroned as the ruling principle in the lives of our church membership. The real long-term objective of the welfare plan is the building of character in the members of the church, givers and receivers, rescuing all that is finest down deep inside of them, and bringing to flower and fruitage the latent richness of the spirit. So there you have it. On the surface, the story of the Mormon welfare program. But really, it's more than that. It's a, a way of life, a system of values, an approach to making Christianity a more effective force in people's lives. Now, that's a perspective that takes in both heaven and earth.